earlier this week I made a guide on the Men of Oz City quest however that was mostly for the skilling aspect of it and like the bank preset and covering over all of the items for this part two of it I'll be going over the combat NPC locations because a lot of NPCs you may not remember from doing a quest a couple years ago because it's such dead content. So for this, of course you want to be a Menafos, but more importantly, for the items you will need will have to be magic note paper, some form of light source, a Zamrock arrow, an ice shaker, which is 40,000 coins. Now this can be added to your tool belt, so you may not need another additional one. You also want melee with a Masuda War Spear as it has AoE and Laceration Boots, which allows you to blade it dive while you're wearing the Masuda's War Spear. And keep in mind, in the description, I will be putting timestamps for the NPCs so you can scroll down and look in there for their locations. First off, we'll be going to Sofenheim because there is a couple NPCs over here. And the magic note paper is extremely needed. Now, let's go north. And keep in mind that the Sofenheim Slayer Dungeon does work, but it requires you to have one Feather of Maw per kill. So it's not too bad, I guess. And it can make you some money. Okay, now, the first one will have to be the Plague Frogs. And again, this is in Sofenheim at the, I want to say the middle-ish area at the south, I mean at the west wall. So it's not when you go upstairs going down to the Sofenheim Slayer Dungeon. It's right over here. And then Bladed Dive into a frog. And what do you know, I missed. So, well, I guess we just have to kill these frogs as normal. They can be a little pain to click on, so you can, like, max zoom in so you can see them. And then, remember, there is some on the south because they like to move a lot. And with Blade of Dive, with Laceration Boots, you can go to a frog. And, since you kill that frog, you can Blade of Dive to another one. And then if it dies within 6 seconds, you can use Bladed Dive again, effectively meaning that, well, there's only like 8 frogs in this spawn, so you'll have to make do with it. Although there is a couple north, but it's only like 4, so I do not suggest it. Next up, we'll be going over the Lotus. These are extremely important, and I, you need to have magic no paper. And that is because for the scaling portion of the city quest, you will need locust meat. And to get locust meat, you have to kill these. So I'll kill one. And keep in mind, you cannot buy this on the Grand Exchange. Oh, okay, well, I guess you can, but honestly, no one's going to have it or even sell it. So you'll have to... Just use magic note paper to note it unless you want to bank like every 20 you do kill. And again, just play a dive, kill it, and then play a dive to the next. And then pretty much repeat until you go from that south wall all the way north. And then do not pick up the meat just yet. You just want to kill them all. And then just pretty much travel. Blade Dive makes this so easy because of the travel. And it, it's like an AoE. Now once you're here, you need to have area loot. And then just start killing them again. While picking up the loot as you go. From like Blade Dive. You can Blade Dive. And then quickly click on the meat. And then space bar. And then go to the next Lotus. Although they do have... A slow respawn timer. And now just so we're here. We'll be going out the gate for the next NPCs. And that will be Crocodiles. 
These are located east of the Sofenheim area. And again, just bladed dive to a crocodile, kill the crocodile, kill again, and again. If you do misclick, it kind of messes up because you do have to wait that 20 seconds. But that's what the Masuda War Spear is for, is for the extra AoE. And these crocodiles, they're pretty simple as you can tell. Now, since we went over here, continue to go east. And these, I don't know why, but the city quest requires you to kill scarabs and scarab sprites. They're pretty much the exact same thing. It's just some are a lancer, some are rangers, some are just normal locusts. But you want to go to the swamp where I'm at right here and then stand in this exact tile. So one square south of the southeastern corner. With this, it should aggro everything on you. But you do have to make sure to kill the Lotus Ranger south. I mean the Scare Ranger. And then go back to your spot. And now everything should spawn near you. And then these Lotus. Yep, there we go. I was going to say everything should kind of just aggro on you. Although I'm not sure why these two Lotus aren't. But this is the tile that's needed to AFK it. And then, of course, you could just manually click those two. But, I mean, they kind of have a fast respawn timer, which I found pretty interesting among one of the few NPCs for the city quest. And again, this is both for the Scarab task and the Scarabrerus. Now, we'll be going over mummies. So just from the swamp, climb up the fallen pillar. And if you do not know where that is, it's just east of Sofenheim. Climb up the pillar. And I did forget, but you can bring a rope. And that is to unlock the shortcut after you pass the low wall to the west. From here, you will see four mummies. Yep, that's right. Four mummies. These, honestly, were pretty bad to do. You can do them in the desert treasure, but I think only one spawns when you're by a coffin and then you need to wait for the Full NPC to completely disappear. Although, as you can tell, I mean, like, these somewhat have a strange respawn timer. Like, when you kill one, another one spawns. And keep in mind that this self mummy, for whatever reason, he can go self and he can get stuck. So, you'll be end up killing the three or four. And then the shortcut that you can add rope to is just north, it's on this little ledge looking thing which we'll use now to go to the next location. Next up, we will be killing vultures. For here, you'll kind of want to go to Gower Dungeon 2, but you want to go west. And again, I will show this on the mini-map. Right here. So again, it's southwest of the heart and then northwest of the agility pyramid. And it even says vultures on the screen. Now, I don't know why it says vultures, because there's only three. But, a good thing is, well, if you don't mind a little bit of running, if you surge, surge again, and blade dive to a vulture, there's three more spawns. And since you did just use blade dive on that last hit, you can blade dive again to it and kill them. Keep in mind, these do have a rare chance of dropping the vulture egg, which does unlock the vulture pet. And then just go east, surge twice. 
and then you have to wait for the three vultures to respawn again and you go back and forth killing a total of six at a time the next one we pretty much passed it and that is the crocodiles and again you can kill them at the other spot but this is also another good spot which is this north of Sofenheim. Next up we will be doing some Menophyte Thugs. So make your way to Balabanich. And of course if you do have 99 Slayer you can teleport to option 5 I believe for some Mona to go there. And then once you're in Balabanich you want to make your way to the purple tent, which is just in the southwest section of the area. For here, again, you can blade a dive or AoE and kill these five or six Menophyte guards, uh, thugs, open the building to the north, and then kill the two inside. And then again, this is a weird thing I noticed, but like as soon as you kill one, another will instantly spawn. If you wait, it won't respawn. So I'm not sure if this is like a bug or something, but I mean, again, no one kills this just because to kill it. It's not even good experience either. Now, next up, you want to teleport to Narda. Because we'll be going for the desert snakes. And keep in mind, this does require a light source. And you will need to have completed or gone through the quest, Spirits of the Alid. And then from Narda, you want to go west into this crevice. If you have not done the quest, you will actually need a rope and then use it on this crevice. And again, it's on the screen right now where it's located climb down and then again zoom in because these are kind of painful to click on but blade dive kind of makes this a little bit easier if you can click on them and then i mean these are extremely quick as you can tell and there's so many that even with a little bit of slow respawn timer, it kind of does make up for it. And now, let's go back up. And I'll teleport to Narda. Next up, we will be doing the Desert Lizards, which does require you to have an ice shaker on your tool belt. And then just from Narda, you want to go run all the way north once you see the fairy ring that means you're almost at the spot you'll actually want to go directly north of it and i really hope you have the slayer technique learned if not you'll need to right click cool off each one which is no fun especially if you're doing blade dive to kill like three or four at once i mean you can't really do that and then there is even more spawns to the north as you can see the only thing these can drop is the light mystic gloves i'm pretty sure which for some reason they are like 70k okay now We'll be going over how to kill bandits. From that, you want to teleport to the bandit camp, which does require the desert treasure quest completed to have access to the lodestone. From the lodestone, you'll want to run west. Keep in mind, this is what the Zamrock arrow is for. Now, I'll show you what happens when you wear the Zamrock arrow. The bayonet will automatically attack you. And the method for this is to just go west 
into the pub where well i mean there's someone here already but you want to stand right where he is or one tile north and or possibly right here so you can aggro the two to three that are outside and i mean this is a very easy task to do it's super quick next up you want to run north from the bandit camp and then you'll kind of want to go a little northwest or here you will see a camel well it's not really a camel it's a you think you think i or something and then these you pretty much have to run around the desert but they're kind of i don't want to say close because they're like a surge away each time but like right here there's three nearby so i mean they're kind of close but it doesn't allow you to kind of run a lot Ooh, hey look another penguin oh okay and i mean that's about it i mean they're not too bad and then the meat you don't even have to worry about just keep killing them as intended and then once i kill this one i will be showing how to kill billy goats which is just goats so from the shanty pass you'll want to run west and then right here on the minimap it's it's uh west of the calphite hive so for here there is six spawns this is the best i can do there is another one but it's five and then it's in narda and of course six is better than five and then since these do have a painful respawn timer unlike other npcs in this video your best method is to hop worlds and then i mean that's it you hop worlds kill six hop worlds again and that's it next up you'll just want to run east a little bit to the calphite hive that is again west of the shanty pass enter the tunnel now you may need a rope i'm not too sure about that and here you can kill cow fights if you do get a cow fight uh city quest that does require you to do them now if you get an exiled you'll actually want to go to the cow fight king hive which i'll show right now actually i'll teleport to the pvm hub to make it a little bit quicker Tune a portal to Calphite King. Enter it. And then you will need food or soul split. And then just run east of Calphite King and AoE all of these. Keep in mind that these Calphites are extremely important as they drop damaged chitin. You will need to pick up them and note them. Because the Menophos skilling task do require damage chitons. So this is pretty much a two-in-one task. Although you could be very unlucky and they'll ask for damage chiton like 12 times. And then you'll end up just killing these for no reason. Although sometimes you could get lucky to kill these. And then the very next task is to hand in a damage chiton. So if you're lucky enough it's two tasks in one if it's in the correct order or if you have a good amount of these damaged chitons noted and then i mean that's about it these ones i find to be very enjoyable and they're great for blue charms as well and just in case you don't know where they're located on the world map it'll say the exiled calphite hive it's just north of the menophos lodestone next up 
This is a very easy one, and that will be killing scorpions. You will need to make your way to Alcria this time. So if you have a Wicked Hood, teleport to the Fire Altar and run north. These scorpions only have 500 health. And I mean, these are... You could kill the scorpions in Solfenheim, but of course, these are so much quicker, although you don't really make anything. So I mean, it's kind of up to you if you want to do this method or in the Sofenheim. So it's pretty much whichever one you feel comfortable to do. Next up, let's teleport to the Bayonet camp and we'll be doing guards and the Rowdy Slaves, which is by far what most people have trouble finding to do because it's been ages since you've done the tourist trap. So from the lodestone, you'll want to run west and then north around this huge hill. Once you're around the hill, you want to go east. Keep running east and you should see some guards and mercenaries. You actually want to kill the mercenary captain. And this is so that you can get a steel key. Which, it's well, it's a metal key which you can right click add to your key ring. But if you already have it, you can just drop it. Enter the gate. And these are the guards. The first time you enter... Even if you spam click, they have to go through a little dialogue and then just kill these guards. I believe you only had to kill about like 20-ish and there's like 8 right here. So I mean, they're pretty quick task. And then they pretty much drop like nothing. And then I'll just kill two more. And then this is the part that I'm pretty sure a large amount of people will not know. And that is to kill the Rowdy Rascals. Again, with your key, you can enter this gate, which I'll show on the minimap now. Which is a desert mining camp. From here, you want to run east and enter the metal door. Run along the opposite side. Now, a very good thing I kind of like how they did is I think you only need to kill a maximum of, I think, four or five of these rowdy slaves because they have a terrible respawn time. And what's even worse than the bad respawn time? There is only one. So we kill him. And I suppose if you want the slave shirt, robe, and boots... You can get it from him. And then let's hop worlds. Since again, there's only one NPC there, so you have to hop worlds unless you don't mind waiting. You find him again and kill him again. With that, that will conclude all of the Menophyte combat NPC locations. Thank you so much for watching this extremely long guide and enjoy the rest of your day.